Okay, folks, this is uh, Twilight 2000, circa 1980-1990 game system by Game Designers Workshop, GDW. The title is Going Home. Copyright is 1986. The uh, Interesting thing is, I still have the store tag up here. When I purchased it in 1887 or so, uh, $7. Can't buy a module today for that. No, sir. Not by anybody's. Not by anybody's standard. Unless, of course, I guess you're buying a very used module from somebody online. Uh, the concept, of course, is uh, going home. There's also a subtitle on here called The Last Claim, Train to Clarksville. The uh, basic premise so far is that your player characters and or yourself are still in mainland or main central Europe, mostly in Poland. Uh, the last few adventures have kind of tied themselves together. Uh, they've either, they're coming into the later part of the year Weather's starting to turn. A lot of the locals are beginning, and, and military units are starting to take in serious consideration about how to survive the winter. And at some point in either the at at a cliffhanger moment at the end of one of the other modules or adventures, or in a a moment of of slowdown or lull, you might get this radio call that comes through, or somebody somebody passing through hands your your group. A uh, copy of these order these orders informing you that it's time to go home. Now, the gist here basically is we've they've added a new element. It says here, adventure points going home is somewhat different from previous Twilight 2000 modules. The players must overcome an additional enemy, an additional enemy over and above people in nature, i.e., time. The basic purpose of going home is to allow players to opportunity to return to America and the adventure possibilities such a trip uh, provides. A second purpose is to provide refugees an updated update on the location and condition of both NATO and Warsaw back units in Central Europe. Whether or not players choose to leave Europe, going home with great, great value of the referee. Now, what you may or may not know is that there are a number of modules and source books set in other places of Europe and the world in general for the player characters to exploit or to adventure through. And this also includes quite a few that are back set back in the United States uh, or what's left of it. So this would be potentially a pivotal pivot point. So in the process, they decide it's time to leave Europe. They go through the module get back to Bremen, get on board the last task force out, and make their way back to the States, where at that point they can become in, in, embroiled in the, the politics and the survival that's going on back in the States. Or this could be over, this, this particular module could be overlaid over a number of the other following modules that deal with taking adventures to Iran or to the to the uh, United Kingdom and surrounding countries as sidebar adventures that are being pre presented to them by, say, the U.S. military or the civilian military uh, attachments or private individuals in order to achieve the goals set in those particular modules or source books and or to somehow better the player characters' positions in the world. While all that is going on, there's a clock ticking in the background that if you want to ride home, this is the ride home. And you miss it, you might find yourself in Dutch. Of course, as the GM and you, the observer and collector, will know that there are a number of modules that have their alternate methods of getting back to the states. Uh, there's several, there's three of them tied in with the last submarine, for example. Uh, so if you get your hands on the submarine, you could use it to, to get back to the states, 
there's one dealing with a, a, a sailing, a very large sailing vessel. And then there's other portions of the world where the, the NATO forces and the U.S. military, they're actually in significant strength and uh, cohesion that they would not be abandoning those regions, say, like uh, the uh, Middle East, for example. So in, th in those situations, your characters could then find themselves adventuring in completely different corners of the globe, so to speak. But for this purpose, going home. We've got the adventure plots, the background. The nuts and bolts is that according to Secure or Supreme Allied Command Europe or what's left of it has decided to evacuate all uh, USA European forces from the continent and return to the America. They've got the tacit uh, agreement for and cooperation of the German government, what there's left of it and have accessed uh, the Germans' uh, remaining maritime navy, so to speak, which pretty much is this hodgepodge collection of, of freighters, co uh, container ships, converted tankers, and ocean-going tugboats, things like that, enough to float and transport 43,000 people. This includes the entire U.S. military complement that's, that was deployed as part of NATO's forces in Europe, and... Uh, any civilian and military attachment uh, individuals and uh, uh, family dependents, as well as any European uh, or Eastern Bloc individuals who have attached themselves to military units. And under this, there's a an order, a military order that says these people can be can, can be naturalized as U.S. citizens for their contribution efforts. So if you're during the process of your player creation, one of your player characters is playing a non-U.S. Uh, person or have a, acquired or uh, attached or adopted, so to speak, somebody from the, the other side or somebody from the local, whatever, uh, they can be reparated back to the States as a citizen. So all these are being prepared to... to uh, fuel this hodgepodge fleet, the authorities, uh, somebody has a, located a drifting oil tanker in the North Sea, they've appropriated it, and its crude oil supply board is going to be used to be burned in the diesel engines of the said fleet, even though burning diesel oil in a diesel, or burning crude oil in a diesel engine doesn't do the engines a whole lot of good, nobody really cares, the whole point is getting back to the states, and this is the formal uh, document that goes through in military speak, you know, copy number 19 or 200 copies, CG, Secure, Bermhaven, blah, 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 Op Ford Omega, explains the current situation and this belief that the Warsaw Pact forces are more or less uh, fought themselves into a, a stupor and that are now more concerned about surviving winter and at launching any major offensives. It's also believed that the remaining uh, German military is significant strength to thwart any minor offensives that may be perpetrated by individual groups of the Warsaw Pact. Uh, that means that, so the general mission is, as I said, units personnel of USER and Defense Assembly at Berthamen prior to November 15th. Vehicles and heavy equipment will be turned over and the units will embark on ocean-going vessels for transport to Norfolk, Virginia. So, what we basically have agreed to do is, by any means possible, your your all U.S. military forces dependents and sundry are to make for Birmingham by no later than the 15th of November, which is when the ship sails. So there's there's our deadline, and as a GM, you could stretch this thing out because, as you all know, time is a is a fluid thing when it comes to an RPG. So it, it might seem like an adventure takes much longer than it does. In in real world scenario, it could take months to conclude a module or a venture built around a module, for example. And yet in actual game terms, it could be days, a week at the most, right? And so we can have them feel this additional constraint as they're making their way back to the to the debarkation point and they're approached by this force or this group or that military agency or whatever and asked to 
to participate in other events which are surrounding these upcoming modules. They can then have that in the back of their head as we got to get this thing done so we can get back to the ships by any means possible. And so we have the order, Operations Order Omega, ordering the evacuation of all the U.S. personnel, uh, exploration of the, of the Operations Order or op, op Board. Then we get the preparation of the last train to Clarksville. So apparently the senior officer of what's left of your unit's command and or perhaps the next layer up of command if they've retained some sort of uh, connection to them even if limited uh, has gotten wind of a steam engine that's still functional in a museum. You know, he has acquired access to or befriended the old retiree who was the engineer of said engine and they have been in preparations for making a run back to Germany in it anyway when the uh, operation order comes through. So what we have here is literally titled the last train to Clarksville. It sounded pretty crazy first so it took quite some time for Martins to talk us into it. Basically the plan was to take a steam engine that had been pulled out of retirement along with a railroad engineer also pulled out of retirement and a few strongbacks to act as track crew and truck across what was left of Central Europe to get the port at Bourbonhaven, Bourbonhaven where we'd catch our ride home. The track should be in good shape most of the way, Martin said, and we could take up, take the rails we needed to fix up what we couldn't go around. The engines could burn wood, although the old engineer wasn't happy about it, something about gumming up the firebox. And Martin said we could probably make about 60 clicks a day, which is a heck of a lot better than we would have to stop and brew moonshine every couple of days. There would be plenty, plenty of room for our gear. We could take a tank if we had one and, and would probably be able to pick up people as we went along. Sounded too good to true, I said. I should have been suspicious because when I asked Martin's boy he needed us, he replied because I don't have any firepower. The main point of going home involves the character Schwartz's meeting with Captain Martin's as a construction engineer and Jan Starkazi, the retired police railroad engineer. His men have formulated a plan to use probably the last working steam train in England or in Poland to travel to Birmingham, Germany, on what remains of Central Europe's rail net. So it goes into a little better detail in our background, the status of the yard itself, the train, the various, the in train itself, the passenger car, various box cars and flat cars, the considerations and rules, for example. If you have something like an artillery piece or a vehicle mounted artillery piece or a, a tank, uh, while you can transport them on a flatbed, getting them on and off is moderately difficult. Uh, firing from said is not recommended because it's likely to flip the car off the tracks or, or worse. So you can carry certain things, tells you what your limitations are, and of course, space considerations. They've also picked up three small uh, inspection vehicles. One that runs is basically a, a little gas, a little gas-powered car. Uh, another one is a motorcycle that's been altered to run on both uh, rail tracks and off-road with a little modern, uh, work on the side, and then a bicycle that can also run on the rail tracks. These ideally would be the vehicles used to scout ahead of the train, to trip any ambushes, or to alert the main train of, of difficulties of track repair and of coming up. Then we come into this section here, which is called all the alternatives uh, for getting from point A to point B. This takes into account a couple of the events that took place in previous modules. For example, the helicopter in Krakow and its limited fuel capacity. If your group has access to it or can steal it, you could potentially use it to fly at least halfway to Wormhaven. The situation of boats, if you've gone through the Pirates of the Vistal in the rooms of Warsaw, you may have access to captured pirate uh, vessels or uh, the, the, the Vistula tug itself and could utilize it to travel uh, to the coast and then along the coast to get to Burbhaven with all the difficulties that implies. Although it does point out that the module does not cover that option, so that would be something that the GM would have to concoct on their own. 
And of course, there's the overland option, which is either by vehicle or by shanks mare, and putting your way across uh, what's left of uh, Poland and uh, Eastern Germany might be time consuming and you know a challenge in and of itself, or a combination thereof of all these different scenarios. But now we get into the uh, the update about the land, the condition, the evacuation various military units, their placement, and their condition. Now, the issuance of this Op4 Omega has created a panic in some aspects among remaining U.S. military units. A lot of them have pretty much, for all intents and purposes, decided uh, that there's only a limited amount of space as a first-come, first-served basis, and nobody wants to get left behind. So disregarding senior uh, uh, command structure or command structure period, they've self, they've disintegrated and began this exodus towards Fairhaven and by all means possible, which means that their potential for limited fighting amongst allied forces, including U.S. versus U.S. forces, and this misguided belief that there's not enough beds for everybody, enough bunks for everybody, this tells both medium size and large size units that have either retained integrity and are moving towards the port or have self-disintegrated and are moving in piecemeal towards the port. Uh, some of these military units have also chose, uh, either collectively or by their command structure, to remain in position, uh, to remain in Europe, even despite the evacuation orders might be because in some cases the rumors that states are really in bad shape, that Europe's far better condition than, the Europe, than Amer uh, mainland America because of the nuclear exchanges uh, and or because these are existing, pre-existing war, pre-war existing units that have been established in Germany for so long and their dependents have been there for so long that they've more or less have become so, uh, members of or uh, at home there and don't want to abandon their civilian friends and associates and families to their fate. So there's a lot of possibilities for conflict and, and confusion. And of course it says, movement of large numbers of soldiers across a great strain to be placed on local communities of central Germany. Many units are following the old custom of foraging, some would say extorting food and fuel from the locals as they pass through, who are under, understandably reluctant to part with them. Sporadic incidents between local militias and the military units are not uncommon. Uh, many bands of marauders are taking advantage of the disorder to accumulate loot. Some bands are relieving American units of their vehicles, claiming to be lawful representation of the German government, blah, blah, blah. And then, uh, in, in addition, some lawful units of the German army are reluctant to allow the good tanks and their AFDs to travel the rear where they need the, they need them at the front. Uh, and then there's some German units and individuals who are upset at, at, at what they feel is the abandonment of the United States, abandoning Europe to their fate by the military, uh, by the uh, United States government and its, or military, and are taking pot shots or disagreements to the player character as they pass through. Here's all of our listing with various units. Uh, as an example, the 278th U.S. Armored Cavalry is 400 men, 4 AFBs are in transit between Bremen and Brief Haven along East Road 233 in Audubon and the National Road number 6. Here's another example, the 43rd U.S. Infantry Division, 1,000 men, 7 AFBs in transit towards Bremhaven, possibly about 30 kilometers north of Nuremberg on the road paralleling State Road 4, no longer a coherent military unit. Uh, the 11th U.S. Armored Cavalry Unit, roughly 500 men, 4 FA, FAVs. The commander of this unit is established as a feudal-style warlord in the region in and around Fluda, 
and the unit station before the warrant has no intentions of bugging out. There's another the 140 U.S. Marine Division, 400 men, 7 AFVs currently in winter quarters in Salzburg, Austria. The 140th is no longer accepting orders from higher headquarters and its commander plans to establish an independent state in the valleys around Salzburg. It's three, several examples of how this works out. We also have the Germans situate the German military's uh, situation, what's left of the British uh, contingent, more Germany. Then we got Warsaw Pact forces in Czechoslovakia, southern Germany, other armed combatant forces, Soviet Union's forces. We, because we have the potential for encountering uh, British units in, in in our evacuation, they've included information uh, are in the German units, the Leopard Three Tank and the Challenger. We get to this chapter. Places of interest. Excuse me. Right. I don't gonna feel like I gotta sneeze. I love mornings. Okay. So we have Altenburg and basically all the major communities in Germany and other because it's listed in brackets in their brief. A brief paragraph or two on their situation. As an example, Biscow, Germany, a small village east of Berlin, a winter cantonment of the 27th German Panzer Division. A few weeks ago, 800 horsemen arrived. The ex Soviet 94th Cavalry Division deserting en masse. The deserters will be transferred to another community come spring, but in the meantime, their presence and demands on the local food supply has caused further bad feeling among the civilian population. And we got some really nice maps. Map of the railroad system, map of basically where the nukes have fallen in central uh, Germany. And then these are supposed to be pullouts. These would be things, like I said, had I played this game, I probably would have removed these things and would have lost them back in the day. But some of these maps would have been handed over to the players. Uh, the part of the Outport Omega that's pertinent to the information for the player or the GM, uh, the color map, of course, these are their versions. And I noticed that most of the maps tend to overlap each other just a hair. So if you have one from the Krakow, for example, and you laid it, overlaid it with this, it would pick up in pieces, but there's a piece of it which would overlap, which makes sense. So in theory, you could piece these together in a much larger map. Uh, there, and they also make a reference to this in here too. There are several government entities that you can contact, and I'm over there not much easier today than back then to get uh, government ordinance maps for very cheap. Uh, as a matter of fact, there was a uh, surplus, army surplus store in Des Moines back in the 80s that I went to on a couple occasions that had just boxes and boxes of what's called ordinance maps of, of different places around the world, and for the most part. U.S. military has micro mapped most places. So if you went to Europe, you could get some pretty heavy, large size, large scale detailed maps of pretty much every square mile of or kilometer of these areas that, these, that this game would be set in because and utilize them to some to, to great degree. I think I actually did go out and buy a few, but. For, I don't know if I remember if it was intending to play this or if I bought it for something other game purpose. I think it was for another game, but they they fold out to be you know quite quite big. They can cover a, a large portion of a table because they're meant for being used by artillery units and or commanders in the field and for military units in the field. So. And then we have our detachment for the outboard offer that your player characters potentially would have ended up with. And we're back to the various communities. Let's see, Hamburg, Germany, before the war, Hamburg was Germany's largest port facility. The city near nearly flattened when World War II was rebuilt, has been flattened again by conventional airstrikes. By the time the nuclear exchange was too badly damaged to be a target, 
and still was spared that devastation, but the damage to the city and its populace was severe. Less than 100,000 people remained on the fringes of the city, most of them subsistence farmers trying to scratch out a meager living. Work facilities are almost completely destroyed. The 6th German Panzer Grenadier Division serves as the city's garrison. It's 900 men making up only a small additional load on the food producing capacity of the city. Almost all of the 6th duties consist of overseeing salvage operations, with the 3rd German Army Command has decreed for the city. And then we have another internal map. Then we got an excerpt on the British and radio travel. British Army in Europe has taken up winter quarters in the area around between the cities of Hanover and Magdeburg. Exactly what the British Army intends to do next is unknown. The British are being rather secretive. They have also let slip that they intend to return to the UK come spring, but many believe that they really intend to remain in Germany. The German Third Army would prefer that they take up residence somewhere other than in the remains of an industrial region, which also happens to be the middle of the richest oil producing area in Germany. The British will cooperate with the evacuation while helping Americans move through their area as quickly as possible. They will also be very reluctant to part with food and fuel. As players enter Germany, radio traffic on, on note on the British. I have a source book coming up that I'm going to review next this morning. That's called The Survivor's Guide to the United Kingdom. And uh, it is basically dealing with uh, the going on uh, situation in Europe, or in England itself, radio traffic, uh, other places of interest, more additional maps. We basically get down to the, what's left of the uh, excerpts on the French and the dead zone and, and some information on their vehicles, uh, personalities that you can encounter and deal with going into detail on them and then the basic rules for operating a train dealing with the water and the rails some encounters general maintenance on the train and concluding the adventure what happens if you miss the boat conditions of embarkation so basically it's a nice it's a nice pivotal piece like i said this is the sort of sort of thing that you can pivot a lot of the other upcoming adventures around so you can have a clock in addition to the adventures themselves so the players are committed to point that they don't really want to dig in and become members of the Polish government or, or set up their own government or what have you. We eventually like to get home. This is the way to get that rolling. And to segue into other modules where they're tapped by this military officer, this organization or what have you, with the addition of the float of this coming back around. So, good addition and an interesting piece to the Twilight 2000 campaign.